Reagan, you ready? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Can you can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear us? Okay. Hello. How's okay. everybody? Oh, Reagan. Wow. Hello. Chase. There we go. Hello. Hello, Reagan hello. Stubble. How's everyone doing? Hello. <clears throat> Sexy voice. Let go. Sal salty. I appreciate. That. Finally, mm -hmm. keyboard stream to watch. Ooh, thank you. Appreciate that. So today, Chase, do you want to do the honors or Space? Do you want to do the honors today? Reagan's got it this week. He's got it? Okay. Hello, everyone. Today, we have none other than the goat of switches. Hello, hello everyone. Theremin goat. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me on, guys. <laughs> no worries. For sure. We can't hear him? Well, let me turn you up Quiet. even more. You guys I mean, can I see. Moved away from my mic a little bit. You guys we can also see. have. He's at 200 now. We have right. Alex and we have Chase, as usual. Hello. Hi, guys. Does everything sound good now? Can we hear me now? I think so. I mean, you guys don't want to. I sure as heck don't want to hear me. <laughs> is, he, is he too loud now, guys? I don't know. You guys tell me. Chat, you tell me. Reagan, I dig the lighting. He upped his game, I, I swear to God. I did something wrong. Um. I don't know what it is. Something's up with my lighting. Like it's like too dark. I didn't change anything. I mean, it's I good. Don't... I'm too low compared to everyone else. Here, okay. I can turn up a little bit on my end. I'm sorry. I thought we had this figured out. It looked okay before. Maybe it just moved away a little bit. This happens sometimes. It the does. beginning, we it's yeah. usually a little bit of. <laughs> trial and error. You don't mind saying yeah. something? Is it not embarrassing me a little bit then. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, trial is, and error. This is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Let me turn Reagan down. Awesome. Fucking how Reagan was YouTube. uh how was your guys' this week? It's okay. Pretty, I mean, pretty good. I mean, it's been a, a busy week, right? Everyone's trying to shove everything in, deadlines and projects before Christmas, right? So, trying to <laughs> finish out the rest of the year and shove a couple months of work into a couple weeks. It feels like. Yeah. It's hard to believe we're less than two weeks out from Christmas and you know, less than three weeks out from the end of 2020. <laughs> I'm ready for it, to be honest. Yeah, I couldn't come quicker. <laughs> I, I'm a little bit, like, thrown back by it all. Like, I just feel like we entered this whole pandemic stage, and then I was, my, my ass has been sitting in my chair for the last <laughs> God knows how long now. And now it's like, oh, by the way, we're going to have to do this all over again in 2021. <laughs> Yeah, it's not going away by then. Yeah. Um, but at least it's like a new year. This year was crazy. I actually yeah. remember like the exact date that we went into like quarantine here, or at least we like started restricting everything here in Ohio because like late February, early March. It was exactly March. Um, I want to say March 11th because our March 11th or our date too. March 12th because we had the uh, Ohio meetup was like on the 14th and they like put on the restriction on like this wall and we're like, oh. We don't know what to do now so yeah that's a little bit uh, well, so I mean, basically like, yeah. since march and i mean like a lot of people were even like i know i don't know about you guys in, in chat but like me and reagan were considering going to um the keyboard meetup you know we wanted to he was pretty pumped up about that and i even got like my passport wanted to do the that keycon keycon yeah and then uh yeah and then that stuff happened so definitely felt shitty I was I was literally just thinking about this and I know this is like very off topic compared to what we normally talk about but like I was just thinking about the other day of how weird it's gonna be the first time I go to like some like say a concert or a festival where there's like large groups of people again how uncomfortable it's gonna feel for everybody the first time that that happens again like it's it's gonna be weird enough like once Dude, I already we see feel people that. Have masks on in public again yeah. it's gonna be really weird but like, I can't imagine what it's going to be like being in large crowds of people again. That, I, I don't know, it, just interesting change. And in... dude, I felt like that completely until I got COVID. And now, even though I still wear a mask everywhere, even though I'm like, at least for the time being medically or scientifically immune to it, as far as I've been told by the health department, um, I don't know. I, that feeling kind of went away where I'm like, eh, cause now I'm just wearing it as like a, you know, so you don't call me. Oh, you're not wearing a mask and i'm like i mean yeah i just i don't go through that so i just wear the mask anyways but yeah. uh 
I'm ready to be back in some large crowds. I don't know about you guys. I want to go. Dude, what's weird music. though is like we're in a keyboard hobby, right? All right, <laughs> we're in this. We're in a keyboard hobby, and if we were to have a meetup, not only is it like the whole fact that you know we'd want to look at the keyboards, I'm sure a thousand people would want to touch your keyboards too. And I feel like that would be the 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 uh, double double negative to having like a keyboard meetup. It's it's a it's a physical item that people want to use. Yeah, it's like a double reason for not to. Yeah, so no. it's. I mean, still though, it's. Uh, I mean, I definitely miss meetups as a whole because aside seeing just the boards, like actually seeing people, I guess I don't really think I really realized like just how important it is, like the the community and getting to see everyone at meetups was until, you know, quarantine hit, and I've seen like thirty total people since March in person. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I yeah, agree. And I think. I think things like Discord have really helped me personally out with just like the socializing aspect of like not seeing as many people as I used to or talking to people that I used to. I, I can't imagine what these last like nine months would have been like without something like Discord or even like the existence of things like Twitch and platforms like that where you can actually just interact with people live. Uh, I don't know. I feel I, that's another thing I was thinking about the other day, just how much these mediums have like become an essential part of people's lives as like socializing has kind of moved to online i mean i've been in i think three or four different like keyboard meetups like what we would call a meetup on discord over the last couple of months and at least like the last two they'll start at like a reasonable time of like three or four in the afternoon here and i've been on until like one two or <laughs> three o'clock yeah in the morning. that's crazy Just still talking to people because it's so nice to sit down and like actually have conversations about keyboards with something other than the wall behind me. So. <laughs> I'm in dude, those too, yeah. and then I usually end up stumbling upon the channel where everyone's drinking, and then I just join them. <laughs> That's pretty much how like I think three virtual key cons have gone for me. There was one Discord we were in. It was uh, I think it was one of the first ones in like Hello Caps. Oh Discord. yes, that was a fun one. And there was a, somehow I ended up in a maxed out voice call that was called. Oh, thank you. Uh, we're only taking shots every minute or something. And I was like, okay, I'm interested in this. And I joined and it was like all these large vendors and artisan makers are like, everyone knows who they are. And everyone's like, all right, one, two, three. And they're like, just all taking shots of tequila and stuff at the same time. It was, it was alcohol funny. poisoning the group chat. Yeah. I mean, that's how a keyboard meetup would be like an after party. Um, you'd find your group and then probably like, I mean, at least me, I'd find a bar after a keyboard meetup, you know, post or pre COVID, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. Dude, I, 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 think, I think it's just... Oh, sorry, go on, Thurman. Oh, I was going to say, I, I did see Maji Neo dropped a, a question in chat, and I'm not sure he caught it. This is a question I get a lot. I'm going to get 100 times over at meetups, but how to actually pronounce my name. So my name is Thurman Goat. Um, it is uh, the musical instrument, the literally hand-wavy instrument designed by Leo Thurman and the barnyard animal. So if you're looking for a pronunciation oh. of my name, that's be the way to do it, so. See, I knew how to pronounce it, I just didn't know the meaning behind it. Oh, well, so the, yeah. well, I mean, that's quite literally what it is. It's actually a an old, like, inside joke with oh, friends. Oh, okay. Um, so we were like, I, I can't remember what year this was. It's five, six years ago, something like that. We're all sitting around talking about, like, early 2000s, like, pop music, and at the time, you know, that like very classic auto tune that was like super robotic and the best you know. auto tune, you mean? Yeah. And we're like, <laughs> quite literally, this sounds like, you know, people were taking a, a goat noise and just <laughs> modulating, modulating it through a theremin. And I was like, okay, so that's how it's kind of stuck. It's been this long running joke that we've, we've had since. And that's where, uh, that's where the name comes from. That so, works. So. Thank you for reassuring me that I've been saying it correctly because while I've never known the phonetics, I've always referred to you as Theremin Goat. I don't I don't think I've ever called you like Theremin Goat, but that's what I I'm get, saying. I get I'm weird going. ones. I get like the reaming oat. I've heard that <laughs> one. Even though I like try and capitalize the T and G. Um I, I've I've just had people like just call me there as they think like somehow min goat is a completely separate thing. I promise you it's infinitely simpler than most people make it out to be. The Rem and Goat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that leads us to speaking of being social with, with keyboards and all the other stuff. Uh, if you guys don't know, Thurman Goat runs a little, I'd say a blog, more so a blog. And 
Um, he reviews Switches, and he has an extensive list of Switches that he's taken his, uh, taken his time and pleasure to review. Hopefully pleasure. And uh, hopefully there's no, no Switches that have caused you displeasure. And uh, if, you, if you guys want to see an, basically the link to that, type an exclamation point uh, Theremin Goat, or you can type an exclamation point Guest. Either one of those will work. Um, or, or if you're listening, that is thereminegoat.com. There you go. There you yeah, go. There that is go. true. Yeah. Keep I writing. Like the name. Um, <laughs> oh, with that being said, you've been doing this a little while. How, how long have you been writing articles and how long have you been into the keyboard hobby? So that's, that's actually, it's funny. The, the website as a whole, I mean, I'm going to work backwards through this. Sure. The website as a whole, um, the reason I know that was like March 12th or March 13th or something like that, that the deadline got enforced is I was building the website to have it ready for our meetup. So I the website went live on March 11th. I think it was like, yeah, it must have been like the 12th or 13th because that very next day, they're like, yeah, we're not having a meetup. I'm like, dude, I've, I haven't I've slept in like this. three days to get this website up. <laughs> so the website itself and the, like, the associated social media accounts have been around since March 11th. Um, the very first article I ever wrote was September 26th of 2019 um and the most popular one that like people started paying attention to was on um i want to say it was like november no like late november early december um and that's why i started gaining traction um that's when i actually started reviewing i collected i've been collecting since february of 2019 and uh, i've been around like lurking the keyboard hobby since uh probably for like three, three and a half years now, whatever that math works out to. So, an OG. yeah, not not in the slightest. I, I talk <laughs> to people who are, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, sometimes even 10 years deep in this hobby. For me to be three, three and a half years in, that's that's nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm coming up on two, and I feel very, little. yeah, yeah, we're coming up. I mean, we're a year and a half, Reagan. I mean, we're, we're probably going to hit our two year mark in August. June, I'd say. More so June? Yeah, I mean, like, I got a mechanic. I mean, okay, I would say as far as, like, being in the community, probably a year and a half. As far as, like, owning a mechanical keyboard, um, almost two years. Yeah. That's really cool, though. I, did, I did actually, you know what, for some reason, I thought, like, I thought you had been around for, like, way longer. No, yeah. no, no. I, I'd, I'd be significantly poorer if I had been around that <laughs> much longer. Fair enough. Um, I started out pretty pretty slow into the hobby, and I'm, for all accounts, for being three years in, I am still fairly slow about it. Um, the Switch collecting has kind of just been this thing that exploded out of nowhere, and um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, however you see it, just has taken on a mind of its own, and it's kind of <laughs> like escaped my control now, and um, I just can't seem to stop collecting them. I do love it. I actually have my tester right over here on the floor next to me. Well, one of the two of them. So. And is there any switches you don't own? Oh yeah. Oh Lots. yeah. I, I have <laughs> uh, on the side of my fridge, like over towards the purple light, sure. I actually have two lists taped up that I have to like pick up, pick up every night before I go to bed and like write out. It's the list of stuff that I have coming and then just like list of stuff that I've seen that I don't have. And just like slowly trying to transfer from one list to the other, I I do not have like a complete collection by any stretch of the imagination. Um, what I do have is, I think as of today, 831 unique different mechanical keyboard switches. I've Jeez. got like another probably 15 to 20 in the mail that should have been here by now, but mm -hmm. USPS is currently dying very quickly. Yeah. Okay. I got, I got a go on. I got a question. When it comes to having that many different types of switches, uh, I guess first of all, do you purchase every switch release that you see that is something unique, or or like, do you purchase recolors as well? Uh, so yeah, I I wouldn't say I. I mean, to answer both of those, I don't necessarily purchase everything that comes out. Um, thankfully, as I've grown in popularity, and this has kind of taken on a mind of its own. I have a lot of people who are super willing to help me out, oh. uh, do me some big favors and getting stuff. So um, like very recently, the last couple of months, we've started to see this move away from like 10 packs of switches to like 70, 90 and 110. Mm -hmm. um, Dude, I, I think you're getting ready right now. You know, yeah. 10 different packs of switches by 70 switches. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't have that kind of money. So 
uh, there are a lot of people all over who are super helpful in oh hey i bought these 70 i don't need all 70 would you know do you want like a couple for the yeah. collection so that's been very helpful um and then to your your question about recolors it's becoming more of a like a real term now recolors but for the longest time that this collection has been going on people just call things recolors without actually knowing what they are Fair enough. Um, and i would say that the concept of these like just straight up recolor like we took this switch we took everything about it it's molds and just made it a different color is a fairly like unique thing that we haven't had up until very recently or at least not nearly as prevalent so to answer that yes i have a lot of what i'm assuming you're asking jwk's stuff <laughs> okay so, <laughs> okay yeah yeah it's a it's it's a really weird line to walk um and it's a little bit easier to like parse those if you have specific questions but i can't just like run you down the quick list of this is a recolor this isn't and like what what molds come from or what molds each switch comes from because i'm not entirely certain myself on some of them but and, and i do want to also say what fosta said too and even from from my perspective um because i get asked a lot of times on stream and i'm sure you know everyone in this community has been asked when even you're talk, talking amongst friends is you like oh we, we get the oh it's just a recolor thing and even when I get asked, I, I typically go, I don't know if that's a recolor. I don't know if something's changed. Like, I don't know how to look into that. Because um, usually they'll just tell you the actuation. They'll tell you what the, what the material is sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's been interesting to see how many different things have been coming out, you know. Oh, yeah, it's it's been crazy. So, like, just from the perspective of my whole collection, for anyone who is listening to this or watching this who was around for has been around for more than three years or paying attention for more than three years i started collecting literally like the same week that we started we saw like our first quote unquote like n like differently colored switch and i've basically been collecting as we've seen this just constant ramp up in switch production mm -hmm. so like what you said when it says recently like literally the entire history of my collection has been more and more switches are getting produced literally by the you know month and now the week and now it seems like the day and um <laughs> yeah just trying to keep up with that is is a lot because i like i have probably you know 100 different switches i could think of that i need to get still or like would like to have in the collection that i i'll, I'll have I to send you some some dragon fruits that i don't end up using i do i do still need dragon yeah. fruits so thank you for that yeah i'll have to send you a few of these I think I think I have, there's ninety. You can ship I, I never me, use. and then I'll I'll ship them to him. Oh yeah, yeah sure, Reagan, sure. I got you, going guy. I got you. Um, but that's really interesting though, because you know we 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 get asked a lot in the keyboard community about switches, and switches is a really popular topic. Um, there's also a huge misconception with switches that switches are the thing that changes the sound. Um, when you know it's part of what changes the sound, but it's the whole entire mm -hmm. keyboard. So it's it's very very interesting to have someone focus in on that and write a lot more articles and you know knowledge based things that you can dive deep into yeah there's not um, enough content yeah no really there isn't like you know, we'll put them in stream but like yeah and like we'll put them in i'll put them in key, key, like keyboard content creators will put stuff into keyboards but i mean like even myself once you kind of settle on a switch that you like that sounds good to the most general you know audience mm -hmm. i hate to be that person but like you know typically i end up just using the same switch then um because it sounds good and it's what i like because I'm doing these keyboards for me, and I'm sure even clients, like, they want, you know, the best sounding switch that most people like. So it's cool to see even some of the more niche switches. You guys say niche yeah, or niche, by the way? Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a weird thing. Like, switches, I mean, now they're a popular topic, right? Because we have all these recolors, pretty colored things, new people coming in, and they're like, look at all these, I want to I wanna see what all these are, but... I think for the longest time they've like been a really under discussed topic of, of keyboards. I mean, five, 10 years ago, it didn't really matter much because you had cat cherry and random Chinese stuff. That's not going to measure up to that. So what's, what's really the point now we have stuff that's competing, that's coming out of the woodwork. I mean, literally a, a month or two ago, um, I was like first introduced to KTT switches, which is only a name that I had seen in China. Um, now they're starting to make some sort of like, uh, you know some sort of waves over here and i don't think they're necessarily like you know end game switches by any stretch of the imagination but for the price that they're coming in with i mean it's 
insanely impressive quality. I'm, I'm getting like pretty good, like like linear switches that I'd feel good in recommending to a beginner completely stock as is. And I'm getting a hundred for like $20 at most, which is completely insane, all things considered. Yeah, very. Um, but yeah, then you talk about sound. People like to ask about sound of switches all the time. And I think that's like a really big, like, beginner misconception that I can't ever seem to like really make like nail home well from my platform. It's that uh, switches are, are one part of the keyboard, right? Things like sound are affected by everything else in your keyboard. Yeah. What material your keyboard's made out of? Do you have dampening foam? What plate? What like what's the size of your caps? Uh, how many desk mats you have on your desk? I'm not not taking any shots at you, Nathan. Uh, you know, what? <laughs> even just like the acoustics of your room really do matter to sound so for people like love to focus in on like the sound of individual switches and i try my best to represent those in stock but like there are so many other things that you can use to change the sound of um your your keyboard and how you can tune that to your favorability so it's 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 interesting too and and by the way, to answer your question um nathan uses 46 desk pads because he's 46 years old all right. Um, another shot at Nathan being a boomer. And it's just interesting, too, because like I'll even get those questions and I, the, I hate to complain about it, but like the worst place and I don't understand where this misconception. Well, I kind of do and I kind of don't. The worst place I get these questions is TikTok and I'll get questions like, bro, what's the best sounding switch? And like I used to take the time and be like, listen, it's not just the switch. It's like a bunch of things. You know, it could be the switch. It could be the keycaps, but it's it's. It's one of those things where it's like, oh my God, like how many, and, th and then I get the question, well, what's now it's, you, you explained to them that it's a multiple different things and you know, it's all, okay, but what's the best sounding keycaps? And it, like the questions never end of what's the best. And I'd like to get off of the what's the best. Like you were even saying like, there's just so much and you want to represent like a broad audience of cool things to get off the what's the best topic requires mm -hmm. like, something i don't know what it requires but it definitely requires something to get off like the what's the best subject and yeah, i think it's okay it's, to have a best for you but in in a hobby that's so dedicated to, to like what you like it's so hard it's it's a hard thing to to explain and like in the thing i even get this misconception that's great and that like my reviews and my scorecards the stuff that i review and like the stuff that i find like really really good or really really poor doesn't even reflect my own tastes like the stuff that i like and that stuff that I actually will use is oftentimes completely imperfect by like standards because I know I can tune that to exactly what I want where I find, I mean, I find now, you know, whereas like new people are like, I just want the best thing, right? Like I want what's, what's perfect for this. I am much more interested in just trying strange things or like, when's the last time you ever saw someone build with this or that, because these yeah. are the kinds of things that I know I can make a good switch out of it, but how many people are using, you know, Okamochi V1s, uh, original like Utemu V2.0 skies or RRE blacks. Like these are the kinds of things that I find super interesting to, to build with. But that's just because I have way too many to decide from on my own, right? So. It is so cool that you say stuff like that because here I am with like a big batch of Duroc switches thinking I'm the coolest kid on the block. I'm like, hell yeah, I got tons of Duroc L7s, guys. But it's so cool that there's so many more things. Like, I haven't even really, like, I've heard of some of those names, but I've never thought, like, maybe where can I get my hands on them, which is interesting. And I think, I think this is going to be very interesting. If you guys have questions about stuff, by the way, in chat, please ask. Um, it's just so, it's so interesting to see that there's, like, a whole different world of where, you know, I haven't explored, and I guess a whole bunch of people haven't really explored. So it's, it's cool yeah. that you bring that to light, you know? Yeah, um, and you were saying, like, I don't even know where where to find these kinds of things. Uh, I mean, there are, like, there's a Switch, you know, collector server on Discord, which is one that I run, and then there's also a Switch Modders Discord, uh, a little bit more active and a little bit more lighthearted on their end, but they, um, I mean, I source a lot of my stuff for my collection through them. They're usually running group buys of stuff out of AliExpress or Taobao um, and getting stuff you know, ship over to the States and mass. Um, there's a, a wonderful gal over there who's buying these KTT switches and orders of like a thousand or 1500. And is like, 
yeah, I'll just send you a couple. I'm like, thank God, because I don't feel like <laughs> feel like buying those and the whole. Um, I see Rob has just asked for links to those channels. I will get those up as I'm talking. But um, yeah, so a lot of it's kind of just exploration. And at least before we started to see all these popular names, a lot of the stuff that I got was from talking to people or just trolling AliExpress. Like just randomly going through, you know, AliExpress and like, this is some completely unint you know unintelligible things, but from the pictures, I have never seen these before, so I'm just going to buy them and get them shipped over here, hmm. um, which is, it's kind of a risky move, but you'd be surprised how awesome, um, how awesome it is to find some like really cool new things. I see people joining the server, so I think they've gotten <laughs> the link to that. Um, it got leaked. What's, uh... What's the most surprising thing you found off of AliExpress, like just doing a deep dive looking like what's the what's something that surprised you them like, I guess a switch or something that you just weren't expecting from AliExpress? Oh, man, there are a couple. Um, there have been oh, there's switch collectors, someone there's also I just dropped in chat uh, the switch modders discord. Um, there are a couple. So one thing that I found uh, a long time ago were these things called um, ranto pad oranges they are black bottoms uh orange stem and a like dark blue housing and they um they're a little bit unique in that the orange stems actually follow the gatoron ks1 model so in my my gat yellow review i stepped through like what are the different technical terms for gat switches because you have um the popular ones like everyone knows that are ks3s which are all blacks you have KS nines, which I believe are milkies. You have the KS three X forty sevens, which are the black bottom clear top gats. So like a lot of those are the super popular ones that everyone knows. But the GAT KS ones were made way before this hobby like basically had blown up. And they have these stems that are a little bit bigger, square, and have like look looks like an actual indent for where o-rings would have sat so it like almost was like they were designed to have o-rings to sit underneath the caps and these ranto pads were done through for like you know specifically the ranto pad company and i found some of these on like the secondary market of aliexpress picked those up uh, eventually and those are really cool i'm actually gonna see if i have them sitting damn that actually here. sounds really like the i guess the i mean the only vintage switch i've ever played with or just old switch or switch that is a little bit more uncommon it would be the vintage vintage cherry black so that's about as much as i've dabbled with well see the thing is those aren't even like vintage per se like those are only like five or six years old i think um the actual the other switch that i had found that was really interesting from aliexpress actually is like truly vintage sure um, and it's coming in the mail to me now so i don't know when it'll actually show up but um back in the 80s or, or 90s cherry did an experiment where they tried stamping the cherry logo not on the nameplate but actually on the back side of the switch mm. um, i should see if i can find a picture of them um and these would actually be the uh like the only there was only like one set of molds ever made so essentially they look like misprints where there's cherry stamped into what people think of the back side of the switch i found a couple of those for sale on AliExpress the other day, and I'm, I'm super happy to have them. I've known of their existence for some time now, but they're fairly rare huh. to come by. So, yeah, kind of cool. Is, that is so interesting. And and like yeah. out of curiosity, what's the value on something like that? If you don't mind Ooh, me asking. Kind of eye of the beholder. Um, those were going for over like fifteen dollars a piece, and there were only like a couple for sale. Which I I was more than willing to pay like fifteen dollars per for those. Totally for something collectors, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like there are other vintage switches that are rare. Like for example, I'm sure you've heard of like Heroes switches, right? Heroes Orange. And yeah, Heroes those things are pricey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, those are are pricey like on normal, but there was actually an older version of um, Heroes Clear that that didn't have cherry housings, and so they had HCP stamped in the top housing rather than cherry. Those are you know, like the oldest versions of Heroes switches to exist. So like something like that, I think I paid like 20 or 25 dollars to have my one for that but you just you do not see those housings with hero switches ever wow. so it's a pretty pretty rare thing as a whole damn that'd be if someone in chat ever wants to make a whole ass keyword of that let me know i'll build it for you <laughs> yeah, yeah let me know i will fly out to see those <laughs> <in person. laughs> if you guys ever want to just send it over i'll pay for shipping both ways and i'll, I'll build it for you on stream 
I got you guys. Yeah, I reached out to Goat, um, let's say like a couple months ago now, and been talking back and forth about some cool stuff, but man, he's been getting me more and more into Switches. He sent me a little handful. I know some of the ones he sent me are like mixed in here. Um, but man, I just have them on my desk and I'm so ADHD that I, I just click them. Here, so I have actually just now found the, it was actually a Taobao link. Now that I say it for those those side stamped cherries, if you will, I just dropped them in chat. If you were like super curious to see what those actually look like, uh -huh. um, they're they're not actually misprints. This was like a mold design they've they've tried, but um, obviously this isn't pop. This isn't you know a popular thing because yeah. we don't see these anymore. So for anyone um, who is in listening on Spotify or any podcast, it, it's a cherry misprint logo. So yeah. you can search that up, and I'm pretty positive you'll be able to find some on on google although, although we've just learned it is not actually a misprint this was done on purpose yeah. as just a as oh yeah a test, I'll, a test print basically sure they were I'll, trying it out. Have, I'll have pictures up on my my instagram when they show up i've got sure. a couple other um cool interesting things coming from cherry so i think i'm i'm due to actually do a post hmm. eventually about them so that's so and that's like it's so wild to, to think about like i think the most expensive switch or switches that i've purchased um probably were those new old stock uh mm. cherries and that's about it but every everything else like i love those switch and then, like i have this extra bag that i just don't want to use because they all turned out so good and i'm just they're, they're just sitting there i have like 80 left of them and i'm like i don't want to put this in any board Hello? because they just sound, sound so so good yeah yeah no i i, I totally get you there yeah. It's it's hard because I have a couple like favorite switches that I have shared that or, or like I haven't like shared or really done reviews on that I'm sitting there like I gotta save these for a good <laughs> a good build and it's like when what's a good build when's a good build gonna gonna come around so I can like finally use these switches um what's your current build right now Ooh. current build so I actually have a right in front of me I have a series um so this is like the Project KB series that everyone's seen before I have laser on it now. Mm -hmm. uh, like first run GMK laser, but what makes this series a little bit more interesting is that it is a prototype. So rather than the flat back, if I can get this through the light, you I can see, actually yeah. see that in the prototype they were going to test mounting the weight on the outside. So this is where the weight cut is. Mm -hmm. A hexagon, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, so interesting, yeah. This is one of their prototypes, and it is built with uh, Okamochi V ones on a custom steel plate. So um, feel and sound pretty good then. Oh yes, uh, they're a, they're a very interesting like light to like mid range tactile switch. Um, being that they were super early, like these were among the first JWK switches to get um, like a custom treatment, or actually the first Durox switch to get a custom treatment. Like after the whole Stelios controversy, they have like loose tops on them. They have loose tops before you even open them. They're they're pretty wobbly on their own right, but. They're like a, a fairly interesting tactile profile that I really liked and I I've wanted to capture like in an actual build since I, I saw those. So that's uh, kind of why I, I built this board with them. You know, kind of like I said, just something interesting, even though it's not technically perfect or technically a good switch by whatever metric you want to use. It's something that I enjoy. So that's yeah, why I, I, I think that's like the goal of everything. You just especially this hobby and especially like to kind of loop back to our initial conversation of you know the covid pandemic i think doing stuff that you enjoy especially in this hobby where stuff can get pretty expensive or stuff's kind of hard to come by as long as you're enjoying it it doesn't have to be the best thing in the world oh, no. as long as you like it and, and i think that's like a, a good thing to remember and i, and I hope hope everyone can can find some enjoyment with any of their builds regardless of how it turns out as long as you're having fun doing it it's the most important thing i mean guys like that's why we're here we're doing yeah. we we're doing keyboards because we, we literally love it and like it's brought a whole damn community together i know there's like sub communities within the community uh, and we're one of those but you know over the overarching overarching theme is keyboards um oh, and yeah. coming together for for one common interest for sure i mean yeah and the the beauty of of keyboards whatever you do enjoy out of that right like i um, you know regardless of what we build everyone has like a thing they they kind of like about keyboards that's different like i mean reagan for example is really big on uh <laughs> cables as we can see so he's got you know a very big interest in stuff like that and 
I've got obviously a, a focus on switches, which is a, a, a relatively rare one, but you've got artisan collectors, you've got designers, you've got other streamers. I mean, there's, there's so many like, I, I want to say niches because I know it's a, a sensitive word for pronunciation in this call, but <laughs> uh, like there's so many niches on like where you could actually go in, and explore within keyboards. Um, there's the forties uh, cult, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a cult just because they, so, they have to share with you <laughs> that they're a 40s person, they're a 40s fanatic. And then currently there are people um, from Ohio that I know are listening to this that are like screaming at their computer screen because I tell them all the time it's a, it's a cult. But there's so <laughs> many different things you can explore in this hobby. And it's honestly kind of kind of cool in that. And you, got the, you got the Ergo keyboards, you got the split community, you got, there's there's a lot. It's really cool though. Yeah, and well, actually, I'm I'm looking in chat, and Rob twenty seven kind of pointed out that he thinks that people need to focus less on this this hype beast limited run type stuff, and um, I can't applaud that enough. Honestly, I think this. I mean, while exclusivity is cool, and like, hey, I've got a Jane V two, or I've got yeah a TGR board, or a key cult, or or whatever thing you find super exclusive and popular is neat. I have no shame in saying that. The work, the board that I daily at work because of my desk is literally a vortex that I've. Hey, nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, it's like I I enjoy it, and it does. You know, I can take it to work and just throw it at the wall, and it's. I mean, it's it's still fine. It's just a a vortex race three, but you know, you can like you should build what you enjoy because at the end of the day, it's your keyboard. I'm not going to use your keyboard, so my opinion on what your build is is worth. No. Well, and I think that's a really important point to what you and Rob bring up, because I know even with our Thursday streams, uh, Apiary and I bring up, you know, look at how many cool projects kind of fly under the radar because we're really focused on, um, you know, more of the high end stuff, the luxury stuff or the stuff that gets dropped in small batches uh, that's really hyped up. Um, and there's just so many cool little projects that just fly under the radar. Some of them are 3D printed projects. Some of them are projects where they're more readily available. I know a lot of people really dig the tofus uh, and stuff stuff that you can get off KBD fans is more accessible. And there is that whole opinion too, which I, I remind everyone every single day that someone brings up tofu, that I absolutely love tofus, that it's, it's okay to like those kind of things. Um, mm-hmm. And there's so much more you can do when you have stuff that's like available to you because you're not, yeah. you're not sitting there playing waiting games for things. And then you want to like, I feel like even when you're playing these waiting games, you then get put into this stuff where it's like, okay, now that I've waited a year for this keyboard, I have to pick the perfect switches and the oh. perfect, and it gets into this whole, like what you what Rob said. It's like the hype beast stuff. It gets put into this, like, well, what's popular right now? Yeah so yeah no it's and, and uh i would also say and like i've i've been discussing this more and more especially now that i like regardless of how popular you think i am i'm starting to gain some level of platform and i hate saying that for the record i, I don't <laughs> think of myself as anything other than just some crazy guy typing to himself uh, on a weekly basis but like i'm starting to realize that there's like a really strong importance to community and a lot of people who are new will come in And it's all about the money, right? And it's not even like in a, like, I want to spend a ton of money or everything's, it's like everything's expensive. So I need to focus on dollar signs and price tags to actually get to any keyboard whatsoever now. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, as you keep moving along with this hobby, you start focusing less and less on the boards. And it's about making these connections with people. Like, um, you know, for example, one of my my good buddies, the guy who actually got me started switch collecting, designs for Alchemist keyboards now. His name's James, and um, I, I don't always agree with some of his design decisions, and I don't necessarily like love all of his boards. And if I saw them from someone else, that I'd buy them in a heartbeat. But I will buy anything that James puts out because mm-hmm. I have grown to be such good friends with him. I love seeing. You know him design and him be successful and i'm more willing to support him or you know support your favorite streamers or support your favorite artists and makers because you know those are the kinds of people that are giving you any sort of variety in this hobby and as much as it's cool to see you know bigger companies making stuff more successful and more you know available the the people pushing that innovation are, are like at the very very small and unnoticed ends a lot of the time and 
I think giving them that kind of support and knowing that you appreciate their work is really what's important. Um, I see, and and Bessa asked. Um, so James is a designer for Alchemist Keyboards. Uh, it's a keyboard place out of the UK. I'm dropping their sure. thing in chat right now. Um, absolute friend of mine. He used to be a, a Switch collector for a while, but he's now transitioned more into design stuff. Um, I actually wish I had his board. Um, on stream today is somewhere over the ocean. I have one of his very first boards, the the Rain V1, coming to me, and it's um, it's really special. I'm super glad to actually finally yeah, be able I've to I've seen that one there on on uh, online. Yeah. Neat looking board, but that's an interesting point that you bring up too. And you know, I have to take a step back and even say about the platform. I think it's it's weird saying it. Totally, I, I understand that as well, and I'm I'm sure mm -hmm. even Regan and and Chase can agree with like it's it's weird even being either in control of a big platform or having that fact where it's like, okay, I have some eyes on me now. It's a weird feeling. And it's like, sometimes it's like, get those eyes off me. Like, I don't want those eyes there. But um, it's it's interesting. And what I've learned, like, I hate it saying, I was the exact same way as you. Like, I hate it saying like, hey, like I might have a platform because I didn't, it, it's not that I didn't want the responsibility. It's like, I didn't want the, the negative aspects of having a platform. But it also, like you said, creates this happens, community. Though. Yeah, it happens. And it creates this community and like, you know, like when I'm, for example, having a bad week for whatever reason, even outside of the keyboard space, like it's cool mm. to know that there's something positive that you can lean back on. Um, and the other big thing too, is it helps create. And what I've really learned in, in chat, you know, guys who watch me and girls who watch me and everyone who's watched me over the last like year have really put this in perspective to me, it helps create this anti-echo chamber of opinions. Yeah. Because I feel like without it, without, you know, like we started Keebcast to kind of intro introduce everybody into, into keyboards and like how we got into keyboards and like our journey, our first year into keyboards and diving deeper into the more, uh, the pits of the hobby, you could say. But I think it's slowly turned around and Chase can probably really agree to this to talking to other people about what they think about the hobby, how they got intro intro into it. And then one thing that's like a reoccurring question is changes and stuff that could be done for the better or what's, you know, good and what's bad about the hobby, looking at negatives and positives and having, I guess, a platform to do that on, I think is super healthy. You know, not just mine. I'm talking like another good person is APA, another good person uh, who talks about some good keyboards. Like there's, there's so many good people online. Um, oh yeah but it's it's super important i think like you said too to create that community and to to kind of push forward with challenging and supporting the people who are to deserve recognition and support as well like totally agree yeah with that. create code actually kind of pointed out or he had a question rather i should say he or she it's you know what do you guys think is the hardest thing that prevents people from getting into the hobby and um you know, I talk about price tags, but I think a lot of it is just like we don't have enough content creators like, you know, I'm all for, you know, having some, you know, favorite streamers that everyone goes to. But like if we had more people doing reviews, like if we had more people doing switch documentation or more people that did things like the the artisan, um, that, that big artisan tracking database where they have, yeah. you know, every artisan by all these people, it's like if we had more people doing these things and it doesn't have to be great like you can literally just be like i have this review blog that i set up or i stream once a month and i just talk about what i got in my keyboards like the more people we have doing any sort of content creation and over any sort of time or, or designing boards or anything like that is how we're going to like make this more yeah. accessible i think because... we're lacking exposure like we just need more content all yeah. around when it oh, comes yeah. to yeah I, I do because like like for example you know, as I don't really know all that much about cables per se. And if I was a new person, I can't just DM you and expect a response. And, you know, oh, you definitely could. And, well, and, I mean, I can, but like, I'm saying that, like, you no, know, I mean, people, any, 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 okay, for the record, anyone can, but I get what you're trying to say. Yeah. Yes. But like, if, you know, if you, you see all these people with exposure to like Teha, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that guy has a DM list that's 10,000 unread messages long just because of how many people are, are DMing him. And if you start getting a bunch of, I don't want to say smaller, but you know, if you get a bunch of smaller streamers and ones you can actually talk to and chat and, and DM and, and talk to, 
we're willing to help out i think that that's going to be better for everyone and i much to that end i saw a um a lacking in switch reviews and that's kind of what i knew i could step in and give back from because i have this huge collection it, sitting dude, here and it's yeah and it's, it's not worth much if it's just for me to mess around with so. and it's so interesting that you say that as well because like one of the big things and i know reagan and i have talked about this when chase was kind of like doing interviewing us in the beginning i'm pointing at reagan but chase was uh kind of interviewing me and reagan at the beginning oh, like one you. of our big things that we were trying to get into or at least me was creating like an updated list that stays updated because I know the ones in like Reddit are a little bit stale and outdated for vendors. And I kind mm -hmm. of took it to the next step and I started buying products from all these vendors and I started giving it like a trust ranking. And then vendors that would just like either not ship or, you know, screw around with something, I, I you know, put them basically on a shit list and just cross them out. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it would be. You should name your shit list shit list. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. And everyone I feel like... gets doo-doo emojis that, that God, is wrong. Dude, can you imagine? There'd be like a handful of people with doo-doo emojis, but there's um you know it's it's interesting and I, I do agree with you. I think with accessibility, I think one thing though, and I don't I don't know if you agree with this, is it's really hard to do some of the it's for keyboards anyways, for, for cases, for kits, it's a little tough to do reviews. Because usually oh, yeah. when the keyboard's out and you have it, the group buy's done. And that's it like you're never gonna so the review becomes like moot almost you know so that, that's the oh, yeah. only thing where it's like man i wish we did preemptive like half why is done in advance exactly or yeah. to review items that are accessible post some sort of group by if there ever was but one. we are seeing we are seeing more prototypes being sent to streamers i don't do a whole <laughs> lot of them myself i'd love to don't get me wrong but we are seeing more prototypes being sent to streamers way ahead of the group by or even a week or two ahead of the time however that's not truly a review that's an impression but i feel like with enough use if the person uses it for a week or two a review can be formed um rama's even sending review i mean yeah i have the car underneath my desk right now so i mean for the record you don't have to be a streamer if you know if you write a yeah i don't know a long form blog feel free to exactly. send stuff to that kind of person yeah. not to <laughs> in any sort of way but yeah I, I agree with that sentiment too like you do, written content's huge guys and that's why like when i see Thurman go write fucking articles every week i'm like i do mine once a month and i feel like that's like yeah. a, an accomplishment for me so yeah but, and as, as humans like a lot of people are divided in that like some people are exclusively visual some are exclusively audio learners um or you know just consumers of written content and for me that's one thing I've never really preferred in the multiple ways is written content, but the exception would have to be your reviews just because I'm genuinely interested in switches in this hobby. But like, if you're telling me that I could, you know, listen to a book versus like read it, I'm probably going to listen to it um, sure. depending on the book. And uh, I, don't, I would even prefer like video to something else. I'm, I'm very much like a visual person. So that's, I think that content in all forms is, is super important, whether it's long form written or, or oh, whatever. Yeah. And that's, that's like a, a big thing. Cause like, I know that Twitch is popular. I mean, I, I know that streaming is, is popular and we have a, a lot of those big names and I, I've, I've seen a lot of those or people on YouTube, like, like Kairos or, or Walker. Mm -hmm. Um, but I tend to ramble. <laughs> and i tend to like you know if you if you were like really sitting me down and grilling me about switch stuff i'm going to just ramble for like a good you know it's going to turn into a dan carlin podcast if i'm doing <laughs> like doing something and um i like i find that long form review even though i'm doing it in 10 15 pages somehow actually succinctly puts everything down on paper from my my way um, not that that's actually succinct in any sort of the imagination, but you know, that's just, that's like the platform that I found the most useful. And at least when I had started back doing this, I was just dropping stuff in a, uh, um, you know, a Google drive. I was plenty happy just dropping stuff in a Google drive being like, there you guys go. You can share this link amongst your friends. And then after a while, everyone, I shouldn't say everyone, but a bunch of people were like, I don't like reading PDFs on my phone. And I was like, well, I don't really care. They're like, well, we do. I was like, all right, I guess it's time to make a website then. <laughs> so everything has kind of come out from that. But, you know, I, I just that's what suits my kind of thing the most. Mm -hmm.
just want to add offering to um, edit down a two hour ramble for me. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave the MX Brown stuff to you, buddy. Sorry. So, like, is your um, own personal preferred method of consuming content written form? Ooh, I wouldn't say it's my preferred, um, but I, uh, so for those who you don't know or haven't uh, read my about section, I'm a, a chemical engineer. Uh, I've been involved in research for like five years now, and I actually work in an ecology lab on top of that. Um, I read papers every day, pretty much. <laughs> like I am constantly reading papers. I've, I mean, I'm literally reading stuff all day, every day. And I have to write like a thesis, my undergrad thesis coming up soon. I'm going to probably go to grad school and I'm going to have to write stuff there. So it's not that it's necessarily what's my preferred, but like over the last, you know, four or five years of my life, it has very much become like the way that I communicate with the world. And I like very much have found uh, an appreciation for like that super detailed, super specific, you know, content that you can get from like a research paper. Whereas, like, if you're just watching a video on yeah. chemistry, like, it's not gonna tell you anything super, super deep. And, so. I, and I think even coming from me, like, I, I came from primarily collecting IEMs and headphones prior to keyboards. And the majority of, like, you're not finding a whole lot of, like, in-depth reviews about headphones on YouTube. You're finding these oh. guys who collect niche or boutique headphones. And they have long lengthy sometimes like four or five page reviews on impressions you know sound curves everything mm -hmm. and to me coming from that seeing more written content being done it's easier for me to scroll through and go backwards and look through text than it is even audio for me just find those key talking points exactly. you're looking for basically yeah. yeah and i actually prefer i think believe it or not video format is last on my list for how i prefer to consume content even though i love doing video content um the reason why is because i like doing other stuff and not having to just focus on a screen mm -hmm. so listening to a podcast or even sometimes reading quickly the information that i want to digest is a little easier and more sustainable for my lifestyle, I guess. See, I'm I'm kind of lazy. The other day I was trying, so I was trying to, I went through a couple of uh, Theremin's uh, blog posts and I was, I was trying to consume a little bit of the content just to get an idea for how he kind of formats things. And so what I did was I copied the entire blog post and then did a TTS and just had it playing in the background <laughs> while I was while I was working on stuff. So I just basically turned his blog into a robotic sounding podcast. I tell you what, I would, I'm going to put something in my next review to like screw up your TTS. I'm going to do like, no. a call, like a whole sentence that's like every letter spaced out just to let you figure that one out. So it'd be like, Chase, you suck. Drop me <laughs> and it's like, wait, what? Code Excuse me, what happened there? Um, which <laughs> I was going to say, that would be really cool to see if there was like an, uh, an audio transcript Oh god. Of, of each of them. I mean, you've got like kind of like a radio voice. Like I feel like you could just have voice? like do Pretty what? Sure I'm a face for radio too, if we're being honest. Nah, dude, you could do some video content just like right at the top of your page and it's like, look, for those of you who prefer this mean of cons uh, this means of consumption, just press play. Yeah. I've actually I've uh I've contemplated doing some like something audio as a whole. Um, I'm pretty partial to like YouTube. That's just kind of the platform I, I like, I usually am on anyways. And I listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh, so when I'm not reading and I'm in a lab, a lot of my lab work I do is, <laughs> it's boring. It is the most boring thing you've ever seen <laughs> today. I, like I talked about before we started streaming, I was in lab this morning and, uh, to make sure this reactor is back up to speed. It's literally this, it, it reads out this number on the front on this little plate. And you have to record that that value every 30 seconds for like two hours. Oh, God. So I will just sit there with a podcast and just like literally intake podcasts. And I've been thinking of doing like just smaller snippets of content that I don't think will necessarily get a full review. Yeah. Because like like people ask all the time, they're like, you know, what what do you review? Like what what is a switch that you get? You go, I want to actually review this. And I don't know. Typically, the stuff that I do review tends to have like some sort of 
you know, interesting historical background, some sort of like new thing to it, like my Alpaca V2 review. It's not really a new switch per se, but like there's a lot of detail there you can really parse out with what are the different molds, what are these new things that we're seeing talked about from yeah. JWK. So if I can look at that and like expand on that, it makes it worth writing. But like, for example, I will probably never write a review about half of this Chinese, you know, no name stuff that I've never seen before kind of just fell on my lap and I'll never see again. And it's like, if I could just talk about that for five minutes or, or 10 minutes, since it'll never actually get a full review, that might be worth doing. It's kind of my inspiration for doing the scorecards in the first place, just like a, um, a one page review that I can do for, you know, I did razor greens the other week. Like I'm not actually going to ever review razor greens as a whole. But getting to at least get some sort of opinion out there is better than nothing. So, okay, I have a, a dead serious question that I know half my chat's probably eager. If I ever sent you Romer G switches from Logitech, would you do a full review on those? I have Romer G switches. What, do you have you done a review? I have not done a review. I, I think actually, those need to be done. He'll do it. He'll do it live here <laughs> in one sentence. I can do them live in one sentence too. <laughs> oh man, I can do them in one word. Here, I've actually got them. Uh, oh my god, chat, them. he has Romer G switches. Um, I those have are, all, all three of them here. Those are what you mean. There's, there's more than one? Yeah, there is a, uh, a blue top <laughs> one that is clicky, I think. There is a. I didn't even know that. White one that's tactile, and this gray one is linear. So at least I, I can't really hear because I've got my, my IEMs in, but like. This white one here is tactile, and this gray one is um, a linear, so there are differences at least there. Um, and I believe this blue one is actually a clicky. I'm yeah, dying to know what are your so. what are your thoughts on them? I mean, they're they're interesting, right? Like, it's a good I, I, you got to give some sort of like brownie points for an interesting switch design because there's only so much you can do for like an, an MX space. Um, I mean, I think they're interesting. The, the mounting style is definitely weird. I don't I don't think I'd ever quite frankly use them. Yeah, but, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, they're actually they're they're really. I mean, now that I'm sitting here playing with them, I'm getting lost to them. I mean, they're they're interesting. I'll definitely say that. I think one of the things people aren't aware is that um, Rumor G switches were made by Omron, which is oh, actually really? an older. Uh, they made switches way back in the past as well, um, and there are these Omron. B3GS switches. Um, there's a white one that's clicky. I think the white one's clicky. And then there's an amber one. I, I distinctly remember Omron B3GS ambers being amazing switches. I think it doesn't fit my tester plate, so it's in a box somewhere. But um, so these aren't even the best switches that Omron's ever made. But Spike, I would highly recommend Spike just said if I there. ever called my wife's cooking interesting, I'm probably cooking the next meal. Interesting. <laughs> oh man, that's. I mean, I don't know. I, I like. I don't want to say they're bad. Like, because I don't. I don't think that like bad switches inherently exist, right? Like, you can have like like people like to dunk on on MX Browns all the time, but like obviously they they are popular to someone. Like someone Glurses, likes yes. them because they're we, prevalent. We have. I don't know if you watched the Glurses keep cast. Listen to that one there. There's a theory. It's not a theory, guys. It's actually truth. So if you guys are it's listening true, to yeah, this true. and watching this, know that this is true. Glarses popularized basically what I'm going to call the shit list of, of Gatoron Browns. All right. He oh, popularized that. What you, what you don't know is he actually has like, I think around 100,000 million switches, Gatoron Browns, sitting in his garage. And next year he's releasing a video saying, guys, I've changed my mind. Brown switches are actually the best switch. This is when he hits 10 million on YouTube. He's going to do that. And he's going to be a millionaire. Well, since we're, we're leaking stuff, I actually have helped contribute to that pile. <laughs> so I, I shipped him like various types of, of brown switches to throw on the pile. Oh. Uh, so so I, I'm doing my fair share. So everyone. Glarus is just sweating right now. He's like, fuck. <laughs> well, he has a PO box. Ship him browns right now. Like, can someone make, can someone make that a meme? You know the stonks meme? Can you guys Photoshop Glarus' bra face on it? And then put like, oh, instead of arrows, on just it. Gator on Browns? I'm Can on someone right please now. do that for me? <laughs> oh man. I, I, I will say, actually, I, I do want to say, uh, while we're sitting here <laughs> making fun of him, um, 
<laughs> I, I as I've grown in, in popularity and, and oh, presence, you, I've had a lot of people like pop into my DMs and ask questions. Uh, you know, Reagan here was one of them. He's asked me. He asked me a, a very a lot of very good questions, but like I, I will still give it to Glarses in that that dude was like on some 500 IQ questions when he first asked me. Like this man literally made me rethink a lot of stuff about um, <laughs> switches and how they work when we sat down and talked. And uh, like, for example, he's pretty much responsible for like the beginner force curve document that I wrote. Like after I talked to him, I was like, oh God, now I have to like, I have to like internalize these thoughts and then get them down on paper for someone to have, you know, for someone else to, to read because they're very interesting so, so speak, as much as he is yeah. a, a funny youtube He's haha funny. kind of guy the dude's there's some, some so big brains what yeah, actually got a large what, brain yeah he has a huge brain dude and let me tell you what what actually made me start going to my twitch streams and actually disabling things like uh filters that i have for my microphone was because one day because usually when i when i was posting sound tests more frequently now i actually just hyperlapse streams and edit streams um, what I normally do is actually block out some of the, the ambient noise around. And Thars says one day, he messaged me and he's like, Alex, do you have like a, uh, an unfiltered version of your latest sound test? And, and I happened to, to just have a running in the background, still never closed Audacity. And I was like, yeah, here's like literally a raw file if you want it. And then he ends up going, hmm, this sounds better than the one you posted. Because it didn't have some of that, that filtering in it. And I was like, yeah. you know what? You're not wrong. Like, why am I so concerned about the, the ambient noise in the room? Like, that's not realistic. Yeah. And what I ended up doing was, like, I, I never really used it up until recently, but I, I created a separate sound layer on my my, uh, t my Twitch stream, which has nothing applied. And you can even hear, like, the fans, like, water running in the background from someone in the house. Like, it made me think, I'm like, why am I so concerned about blocking out ambient noise? Like, that's the, the better sound is going to come from that. And it's just oh, yeah. a passing comment, you know? And if people want to hear what the keyboard sounds like, I mean, you're never going to be in a sterile environment with no background noises. So, yeah. I mean, it's more realistic in that sense, too. Speak for yourself, Chase. To, to pivot on <laughs> that. Your hotel room. To pivot on that smart guy comment, Max F actually just asked about uh, Heroin Bob. Um, it sounds like a loaded name, but uh, for those <laughs> of does. you who don't know, HB Heroin Bob, or uh, as he goes on Reddit, or Gazoo, um, is this pretty pretty popular guy um at least in terms of like the history of mk and that he you know created the utemu sky switch um he's now recently moved on to doing these boba switches which are currently silent tactiles um, i believe he's doing like non-silenced versions um and you know that guy is he's insanely smart um, he's basically been working as a, like a one man team, uh, in conjunction with Utemu for five or six years now. Um, I have an entire, like my other tester that's sitting over there. I actually have like an entire history of his switches, um, that goes back from like when he first started getting them made and he is constantly working to improve. And when I sat down and talked to him, I've talked to him a couple of times, thankfully, um, he, we we've talked like four times. On, on like discord voice calls and i think like our total talking time is like 14 hours or something like that because you just get this guy talking about switches and he knows so much it's incredible um and he so to answer the question and instead of start fangirling about him um <laughs> he's still around he's working on his boba switches now um he's doing non-silent versions linear versions silent linear versions um and he's still working alongside utemu like he has from the start so mm -hmm. i would also definitely check him out um for beginners who are looking to do stuff he also tends to sell by parts so whereas you know you get a lot of these vendors who are selling like singular switches or like whole switches he'll sell or at least in the past he was selling just top housings just bottom housings just springs just stems and it's a really cool way to get to like customize and mess around with your switches um in, in different ways so i'd highly recommend checking him out so have have we asked you how you actually got into like reviewing switches themselves? Because I know you kind of said like when your first review went up, like when your first blog went up. But like, like I know, and I know you said you collected, but there's a difference between collecting and then going through and reviewing. <laughs> there's, there's so, a 
I, I, I remember my first, like my first three, I think it was three documents. So the very first one I ever did is I, so when I was collecting, I was starting to like really specialize my collection a lot. Um, one of the things I do collect a lot of are prototypes. So I tend to collect, or I, I enjoy collecting things that are not necessarily the finalized product. I mean, I have my series here that is a prototype itself. And with switches, there are a lot of like very interesting things that you do not see as like an end consumer. Um, and I feel very thankful to get, like, get to experience those. Um, so actually, hell, I'm sitting here now looking at them. Like I have a couple of the ones we saw on Teja's stream the other night. Those the full palm Xerox switches here. These are prototypes that were sent my way. Um, but I, I had asked Thick Thock, um, Jeff CC Wise, the guy who runs that. Um, for marshmallow prototypes because he had prototypes pictures posted that didn't have the nameplate whereas the release ones were going to have the nameplate he's like well you collect you have a big collection if i send them will you just give your opinion i was like yeah sure whatever i'll care i just want the prototype man i'll tell you i'll i'll, I'll write anything for you if you'll send it to me so he sent it to me i wrote uh, effectively just like a first review he's pretty bad to be honest with you <laughs> and the next day he um, you know, had this like advertising picture made up and it had like the switches and then it had what they were. And on the side, it had Brian from Top Clack. It had his opinion and then it had mine right beneath it. And I was like, okay, that's that's strange, but it was kind of cool. So I did another one after that. I think it was like the the Gat Laserons and it was a horrible review. Like <laughs> like no one, no one read it. Uh, I will admit it was a pretty bad review. Um, and then like right around that time after that, we had the Stelios controversy. And at the time I was kind of on the fence about keeping writing. I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. No one really seemed to care about the last one. And I was in a, like a really unique position because I was one of the very first people to have like tangible evidence that Duroc was the one producing Stelios. Like I actually have from them a factory sample set from before Stelios were even like pinned to them that are, you know, Stelios. They're, you know, look like zeal switches but they have no nameplates okay. and i was like i'm freaking tired of everyone messing this up like i keep getting a hundred different people saying a hundred different things about the story so i wrote like one big document it's got like 50 citations in it this is like the history of the Stelios controversy and it blew up like everyone was reading it i had people coming out of the woodworks dming <laughs> me about it and people were like it, dude, you gotta keep this what, that was dude, like a record number of hits for you too right yeah. i think that's the one you were telling me about oh i mean it's still it is still to this day after all the stuff i post on my website it's still like in my top five articles read of all time and this was <laughs> literally posted four months before they had a website dude, um, it's, it's, still a it's so funny that you say that though because like if you could write like all the cool interesting facts in the world and and it's just like it just it goes to show you the I guess humans just like so attracted to drama and it's, oh, it's, it's like a oh. TMZ article kind of, you know, like the history of like Justin Bieber's, you know, descent into childhood fame and then growing up and not becoming a giant piece of shit anymore. It's like, it's, by the way, I love Justin Bieber for the fact, for the record, guys, Justin Bieber's a king. Don't get that fucked up. Um, but it's... It's so funny that people would like flock to that, but it's so interesting because like, I think I read that article as well. Oh man, it is, it is, honestly, it's kind of crazy. And that's like, that's what launched me still doing this stuff. And, um, and honestly, like it kind of is, is great that that was the one that did it because at the same time, I literally at the end, you know, I, I kind of had posed the question, is this the rise of Duroc? Like, are we going to see this becoming a major producer? And, you know, my Switch collection was kind of kind of big at the time, a couple hundred Switches. And then I start reviewing seriously, Duroc blows up, and now I'm sitting here as the person that gets asked, like, is this the this and such and such mold? Is this a recolor of that? Or what do you feel about the material of this top housing from this JWK Switch? And, like, it's kind of all grown together at the same time. So it's a, a very interesting thing that I've... I, just happened i guess be at the right place at the right time and to much that credit so to much the credit of who helped me out um those stelio switches that i got 
I didn't actually get on my own. There's another you know, really big collector. He sits kind of in the uh, the shadows, so I won't drop his name. But he's got almost, you know, like 700 switches himself. I mean, he's one literally the second largest collection in the world. He is for the longest time my like my go to Chinese guy. He can talk to any manufacturer, mind you. He does not know Chinese. He's Greek, uh, but he can talk to basically any Chinese manufacturer and get them to send him stuff. I don't know how he does it. And he was able to get us that factory sample set. I still remember to this day, like opening the mail and sitting there. I was like, damn, these actually are Stelios. Like, like this is the place that's making them. So um, I guess I should say I've seen a couple questions roll by for people asking. Um, basically, the there's this whole controversy about, um, my gosh, shorting a, a whole like 25 page document for you. But Duroc, JWK, this, this company that we all buy switches from now, you know, the current gold standard, if you will, to take a, a joke at Cherry's marketing team there. But uh, they they started out by, well, I shouldn't say started out by, but they were they became popular for making fake zeal switches. These fake zeal switches were sold on KBD fans. Um, and short time towards like December of 2019, November, December of 2019, it came to light that these were actually fake zeal switches. And once we figured out it was Duroc, JWK making these, that got all this popularity about them. And then like very shortly after, someone's like, I'll get some custom switches made. And then everything that we've had after that has been this this spawn out of this this controversy about fake zeal switches. So um, it's it's kind of all been this really uh really big unfolding history of that that company in particular. So <laughs> Which is pretty interesting on its own right. Like it's it's interesting to see, I guess the correct side of that. Because I remember even when when that was happening, like all the weird articles on on Reddit, especially about that. Yeah. But I, I remember too the KBD fans like response to that. Like I've spoken to Way a few times, and I I don't think he would go out of his way to like scam people, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I don't it's know. I, I have a lot of like theories and, and we can just sit here and joke about like, you know, who really did it? And, yeah, and, like what was the, the whole of it. And I don't really know. And actually, it's funny. I, I mentioned prototypes earlier. Um, I some of my very first prototypes I got, I actually have the first T1 prototypes. Hmm. Uh, so like these were the ones that had KBD fans markings and that actually kind of helped you know, really like seal the deal that these were actually Stelios. Let me see if I, I know they're up here. Sure. While you're looking for that, we also have a very important question for Max because someone had to ask. Uh, he said, that's awesome. Lots of fantastic knowledge in all these switches. I love linears, use them all the time. Vintage blacks are probably my favorite. I also love creams, inks, Frankensteinings with J, uh, Franken switching rather with J, JWK. But what's your favorite switch for gaming? <laughs> Man. <laughs> I thought we already talked about rumor G's. God. I can't, really the, <laughs> can't really see the nameplate, but these these two were actually the very first uh, K, like KBD fans T1 prototypes. We have a clear with a, a tan stem that's kind of hard to get, and then a, a dark housing with with yellow stem. And it's, oh. both of them have well, actually, the black and yellow has that KBD fans branding that everyone knows. That's it, it's in the Stelios document. Can't recommend reading it enough up my page view, you know, make me feel a little bit better. <laughs> so I guess no, now chat you, now chat sorry. says that Romer G's are Romer goats. FYI, Romer so. goats. That's great. There you go. That's, you well, go? I mean, if we're going to like make puns about it, I always have said, we've joked about like, what's the, you know, if I, if you were going to make your own switch, right? I get this question free in every, every day. And I've said that like, I would skirt the lines of like IP theft <laughs> and make the nameplates on my housings go to Ron. Um, same font and everything just to see how good Gatoron's legal team is. So and that's the I, only reason. Just to, you just want to test their legal team. I think it'd be funny, right? So we're waiting to see uh so if I ever come out with switches, they will be Gatoron switches for all of you who are asking. I'm Poopoo <laughs> Poopoo asks. Awesome. I love that name, Poopoo. Every time I read your, your goddamn comments, I fucking love reading them by the way. Why do people say new old stock vintage cherry blacks? Um, I'm assuming, and I'd like to be corrected if I'm wrong, that people say that because it's brand new out of a box from way back when. Um, so I guess it coins that term, new, old stock. 
but maybe I'm incorrect in that. Am I kind of correct uh, in that? Yeah, I know. I think you're you're right. So, like, first of all, like I would say, new stock. If like if you're asking, is like as a whole, it's it's a really interesting question because it's like, for example, if you have a vintage board that's been sitting in a box for thirty years, forty years. If it's brand new in box, it's effect it's effectively new stock. It doesn't have any of the break in for it. Um, for example, I actually have I can pull it down here now. Um, for my upcoming Borsdorf build that I have, I actually have uh, a um, this is a vintage typewriter that has SKCL greens in it, and this was actually found in a box in Canada. So these have literally never been used. Like they broke the plastic to get this for me. So these are effectively new, new old stock SKCL greens. Cause I mean, you know, these are from the eighties or nineties, honestly. So there's that vintage blacks. Vintage is kind of a hard thing to parse, right? We don't know what the exact time frame is on that. I've heard a lot of people <laughs> say that I think 1994 is the cutoff. Of, yes, of vintage I, I've read that as well. Yeah. And, and people say that, you know, what's, you know, it, it, people say it's a meme and to that end, like, I, I kind of understand, right? Because people talk about, like, I have this vintage cherry switch from 1957. We found it in the rubble from some factory in some unknown country, right? We dug it up from Atlantis. And it's like, I think that you can actually make any cherry switch that you get as good as quote unquote vintage switches. And the reason people say vintage switches are good is because they've been quote unquote broken in over time. So I mean, I'm here's the other side of the like... coin from what I've heard from people. I think mm -hmm. there's a large impression that people think that the molds or the way that they were done was different 25 plus years ago, which mm -hmm. makes the switch different. And I don't know, cause I don't know the answer to that. If that's a misconception. So no, that's not, that's actually not a misconception. That's very true. Uh, that, that's, that's one of the things Cherry's guilty of. You hear like people talk about retooled cherries, right? Mm -hmm. Cherry fixes their tooling. It feels like every millisecond. It really does. Because like you can buy like cherry switches that I bought when I first started. If I bought new cherry switches now, I'm almost certain that those are not the same molds and that there are some differences. So the thing is, it's like, Mm -hmm. Cherry is constantly, constantly, constantly retooling stuff just because the amount of stuff that they put out, the, the amount of volume of switches they move and their molds have changed over time. So vintage switches have a different mold and you hear people talk about those and I think they enjoy those to some extent. Like you, there's this like very niche part of the community that likes like vintage browns and supposedly there's something about, you know, the old molds that brown switches were made, you know, pre like 1990 that were like super good. I don't actually know that, but it's not wrong in saying that Cherry has changed molds over time. Like they've, they change molds all the freaking time, if I'm being honest with you. So. And someone just said, looks like we went to a lot of garage sales over the summer. Dude, because of it, like if, if this summer there wasn't COVID, I would have done the same thing. I was actually considering going to places like um goodwills and some of the other things to see if i can find like really old boards to like do some cool content with but like unfortunately you know just want to the best practice of social distancing and staying home um but i know for a fact that if i were to go look in my garage there's some brand new old mechanical keyboard that i i'd have to go and tear apart because i don't know where the hell it is from the 90s that I, I get, don't know what's inside of it but i know it's mechanical that we remember we bought we might have opened and never used the thing at the same time we we're transitioning computers oh see i've, I've got a, a real key in um and I, i've actually gotten a board out of it so i have a ti 94a it was like the competitor to the commodore series boards um mine is like the oldest rarest variant that has alps skccs in them and i got it because of my mother so like i've talked to her enough about keyboards and coached her on like what old keyboards look like <laughs> That when she goes to garage sales and thrift stores, she like literally, I was sitting in class one day. She just sent me a picture of it. She's like, do you want this? I'm like, yes, buy it, please buy it right now. <laughs> so, and like to this day, I've gotten a couple more like pictures of just like old, you know, crusty keyboard. She's like, is this, is this worth something? <laughs> so I have, 
like hey get you get your mom get your moms in on this have them look for it get your parents or your, your friends moms do <laughs> heck yeah <laughs> man they will they will get your you grandmas the get, way. get your nonas for the italians in here Graham, Graham, get <laughs> slang some keyboards for me come on get, oh. get them in get them in on this it's a good hobby to get into it brings the whole fam together if you recognize it from your childhood, Grandma, you better grab it. <laughs> I feel like, she, like my mom's a nurse. She works in a hospital. I'm like, I know you guys have like some dusty corner of the hospital that stuff's been abandoned. Like, if you just get bored someday or have like a lunch break you're not going to use, could you just, just go walking <laughs> into that part of the the hospital and go and find me something interesting? So, oh, I know. Bill, Bill Blind just said we have a keyboard at home, though. I know that's like the typical mom response. It's like. What's wrong with the one we have at home? But you don't get it, Mom. It's it's vintage. You don't understand. No, but I will say, though, you talked about like going to garage sales. I would, if you, I mean, the chances now of, of finding stuff are a lot harder because there are a ton of people that do it. But, like, go to your local electronics warehouse or, like, like electronic waste place and just go dig around. Like, I, I there's one in Columbus where I am. I went and literally just dug through the dustiest warehouse. I think they like take all of the dust from like surrounding Columbus and just shove it into this one <laughs> warehouse. And just like it had medical, like medical scrap. Like there was an entire like torn apart MRI machine, like big server racks that just have like, it looks like bullet holes through the sides. And I'm just <laughs> digging through all this to try and find keyboards. It, it was a blast. I didn't find anything, but like it's a it's a fun time if you ever go vintage keyboard hunting. So it sounds like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Yeah, you'd see some some relics of the past, some some bullet right. absorbed server racks. Yeah, Chase um, and I are gonna go. Yeah, let's do it. You're gonna go, you two? Okay. We're gonna go hit every Goodwill from here to <laughs> Dallas. Oh man, I still I still stop in the Goodwills whenever I'm like out. I'll be like, dude, today's the day. Today's the day. Geeks don't panic me. It's a good point. I'm gonna get together with all the with all the other keyboard content creators. We're gonna create a reality show. I'm gonna get sick. If you guys have ever seen Dog the Bounty Hunter, we're gonna get Dog the Bounty Hunter sunglasses on. All right, and we're gonna go hunting for vintage keyboards. Well, mm-hmm. there's there's like show there's like there's like or there was I don't know if there still is, but I remember when I was younger, like sitting down with my parents and watching shows of guys who went like they would go to like garage sales or go to like people's houses of people who hoard things and just like go antique hunting basically and offer up money for it and things like that. Like, I mean, that probably could very well be a series of like, I went to this city, I went to this city and -and so-and-so to look through their, you know, look through the, the trash heaps of technology that they have and found found this the surprising old... keyboard no no that'll happen in 50 years and be like we found an old key cult look at this number 165 <laughs> <laughs> it'll happen that'll happen soon you know um but that'd be really cool though uh one question i wanted to ask is so we normally do this for about an hour and a half but uh, if you guys have questions in chat please and, and ask them now um i wanted to ask one thing that we always ask we didn't really get to it we had a lot of fun talking about switches is things about the hobby so this is like a three-part question okay what is your advice for people getting into it uh what are your favorite things about the hobby and what what are some th- things that maybe you're either let down with or you feel like need to change oh so things thing advice for new people what was the second one uh, advice for new people um favorite things about the hobby and then things that you would maybe change um okay because the last one's easy. Like I, everyone can complain. Like ever, that's, is it, that's is it group us? Uh, I mean, <laughs> my advice, my solid, honest to God advice for new people, is is to buy a switch tester. And like, duh, right? Like I'm the guy that's going to be the one to tell you that. But I agree. The the reason I suggest it is because a lot of people don't, and people are like, well, that's not a full set of switches. Like that doesn't tell me anything. I, I'm not going to build a board with well, one of everything. So. How can I actually tell? And to that, right, when you have beginners, if you like have barely dealt with mechanical keyboards, you don't know the differences between a lot of switches. Like you might be able to read it and go like, ah, yes, a blue is a clicky, a brown is a tactile. But if you have zero reference for what that actually is, it's extremely hard for you to read about any other switches or, or like ask about other switches and get context because, you know, a common switch tester is going to have a black, a red, a blue of some type, brown, 
you know, it's going to have all these things that are, are very, you know, quote unquote, universal switches. Mm -hmm. And when you have those things and you have that sort of basis for what those are, it makes understanding anything about newer switches so much better. Yeah. I so agree. I will always recommend it. It's worth the money. I know it seems scary and expensive, but just do it. Please do it. Hmm. So um, there's that. Good point. Yeah. Things that I enjoy about the hobby. I mean, like I said, I, I enjoy switches. <laughs> like I have to. I'm obligated to say that. Um, I, I've come to appreciate the, the community over the at least, especially over COVID, right? I've come in contact with a lot of people that, um, you know, I look up to. <laughs> like people who've been around longer and I think of as like big names in the community. And I've gotten to talk with content creators, talk with designers, you know, about things I have no idea. Like PCB design. There's a guy in Ohio who, you know, by the name of Nilla, who's working on these just random projects. Um, I've talked to him about PCB design. I've gotten to talk to, you know, Reagan about cables. I, I feel like all these, you know, people who, you know, see the same hobby I do and yeah. yet have a different take on it all together is honestly something that we don't, I don't think we appreciate nearly enough. And I know we were talking about it at the beginning, but like I... God, this community is freaking awesome. And I'm so glad that I found it when I did. Um, and yeah. I hope that it only continues to grow. Me too. Um, yeah. Can we get some love and that... chat for the community? Come on, some hearts, please. I'll put my first. Oh, man. Little, little hats off. No, man. it's my fault. I, I clicked something there. Thanks for my Windows key. My little hearts, my... guys. <laughs> the, the thing about um, what, what do I not like about the community right now? I mean, there are there are a lot there are a lot of things that I like like little things here and there. I wouldn't say there's a lot, but like one of the the things that I think um, it is a, a problem, if you want to just put it that way, are these the the newer folks that come in and necessarily think that they have to buy the best thing. Yeah, like you get people that come in and want like like I have never owned a keyboard before. I want a key cult. And you're like. Mm -hmm congratulations i'm glad that you can point to the most expensive keyboard you can find on the internet but like that's not really realistic for a lot of people starting out i i, I hope that there you know as we continue to grow that there's a lot more exploration and there's a lot more like personal journey that's established right rather than just trying to go buy the best thing like buy a mechanical keyboard first like and i'm going to make a great example of this i still have it um, I have my very first keyboard. It is an Obbins and Pro with with Browns, Cherry Browns and Nautilus, which is the keycap set that I bought for it. This is the very first keyboard I ever owned and I will never let go of it. And it sounds just as bad as you think. Yeah. It does. <laughs> I can imagine. I can already hear you kind of rustling it around. And I can like hear the hollowness of a plastic. <laughs> and like, this is still like so important to me because without this, I wouldn't have been any like I wouldn't have bought my switch tester to try stuff out. I wouldn't have gotten any of the keycaps I've like. I wouldn't have talked to any of the people I did. I mean, I took this to my first meetup and there's like there's something to say about not necessarily diving in and having to have the most expensive thing ever, mm. but like just building a board that you will like and just trying stuff out. Because there's so many things to do, so I, I yeah, I I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah, and the reason there, why I say that is flex culture. That yeah. is that's the problem. It's a flex culture, really. And I say that too because even today we we built the key, we built the key cult number two, and I, I've had the, the opportunity to build some really cool keyboards. But like <clears throat> we also built the canoe, mm -hmm. and we put MT3 caps on it, and we we added some you know aftermarket foam and stuff like that, and you know we. Obviously, it's not the same keyboard, but we we had some people go, yeah, I really like the way that sounds versus the key call. And totally, you know, that's a totally fair thing to say. Like, there's there's different different people. I'm excited to get that the canoe back. I don't know, if Ash keeps. I might might keep this one. I'm joking. I'll send it back to you eventually. Um, it's one of those things where it's uh it's it's fun to to experiment. And like I said, I've I've made tofu's for for clients who have maybe sent me like an interesting material to play around with to put in between the keyboard or underneath the, you know the pcb and they make for some really cool projects like i'm dead serious when i think that and i need to buy one still i need to rustle up 200 bucks to buy a ducky but a ducky is a popular keyboard and 
I'm dead serious when I tell you that I think we can probably make a ducky sound really, really good. Yeah. Oh, um, I know you can. Yeah. Like I it's know you can. it's not just and I totally agree with that sentiment. I think it's that whole it is flex culture in, in a way, but I think it's it's the whole um pay to win mentality that even kind of you know is in video games. I don't know yeah. if you guys have ever done this, but like I know I'm guilty of it. If I go download a game, Maple Story. And suddenly mm-hmm. I see like I can buy things and I'm like, all right, this is nice. I can now spend $400 to get the best things. And mm-hmm. then the whole game is like essentially irrelevant. Like you're skipping all the meat in the win. contest of something, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's exactly the same thing with keyboards. Like you're not saying you have to go buy 15 keyboards, but I mean, just cause I mean like I, I, I just, I literally had a friend who spent $4,000 Plus, not knowing what the hell he was getting into because he just had to have a key cult. So he got ripped off and spent $4,000. I, I mean, I say ripped off lightly because obviously to each their own, whatever they want to do with their money. But he said he felt ripped off because like that's not the, the average that the aftermarket they're going for. And he didn't do his research. But it's, it's again, I feel like you get a better understanding in the long run if you start smaller. I yeah. totally agree with that. Yep. People, I, like I've had people ask me personally, like like friends that aren't with it in this that are kind of like, you know, asking me like, well, why, like, I, I guess like, you know, what makes this keyboard different than, you know, like what makes it worth more money than the one that I use? Like it's functionally the same thing, right? And I was like, yes, it's functionally the same thing. Uh, but it's all preference stuff. And I, I think the, the keyboard enthusiast like community is very similar to like the automotive enthusiast community and that most people are going to have your, your Ford focuses, your Honda civics Amen. that they're going to dump, they're going to dump money into to make it an enjoyable ride for themselves and an enjoyable like daily driver for themselves. But then there's going to be the people who can just go out and, buy a ferrari because they want to and i think i think there's a lot of similarities between the two hobbies because it it, it, again it all comes down to preference and what feels good to you um and there's a lot of different things that you can do inside of a keyboard to make it feel better and perform i I say perform but just it it is really just feel it's feel and sound different so Oh yeah, and and I gotta I because I saw some questions roll through on chat. Um, like one of them is like my take on on Franken switching, and people ask you know about that. And for those of you who don't know, Franken switching is like taking different switch components, right? Taking top housing from one and a bottom housing from another, and, and putting them together to try and make different combinations you couldn't buy stock. And I wholeheartedly recommend it. That like ties directly into what he was, you know, Chase was just saying about all this variability that you can get. And like, there's literally, like I said, there's an entire discord where these dudes just mash together different random combinations of stuff. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Ones. And like you, they produce things that to them might not have, you know, been as good before. Like for example, everyone, if you're new, You've probably heard of a Holy Panda. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Holy Pandas were a Franken switch mm-hmm. in the first place. Yes. Like they literally came out from, you know, Brian from from Top Clack just smashing stuff together and, and trying what worked. So to that end, I support it 100%. Mm-hmm. I don't review them necessarily or collect them because, or, or I don't collect them one because that's an infinite number of possible mm-hmm. combinations. I, I have enough problem collecting stock stuff, believe me. But the i don't review them because it's like i don't want i don't think there's necessarily as much value for me reviewing like all these weird combinations of stuff when if i could just review what you are capable of buying like i'm gonna get um those lavender switches from canon keys eventually and it's like if i can even put a scorecard out on that then you could know this is what you want to buy and you know you can take a, a stance on those if you think that you might want to combine them with stuff i'll leave that onus to you so and i've also seen yeah. the my favorite question about what's my favorite switch whoever that was that was asking i think it's joel types sorry buddy that's not an answer i can give i've tried way too many switches to be able to give any sort of solid answer on on what's my favorite <laughs> so sorry. You ha- i've you already ha- tried have to I've say already tried, guys 
the rumor go, dude. It's the rumor go. But Gringo makes an interesting point too, saying that um, it's kind of gatekeepy to be kind of like you're new, you're not vetted enough to buy this this keyboard. I think um, I think you do make a good point there, Gringo. Um, but I also think there's I mean, that whole aspect of like I know with other hobbies too, I've bought in really expensive stuff, thinking that I can get to like the end game or like you know I want this really cool thing quick. And I'm just talking from experience here myself. I've always regretted those purchases because either I mess it up somehow because I don't have like the understanding um, or it's just like I, I end up getting to this point and then I kind of diffuse everything for myself and like suddenly it's not enjoyable anymore. Well, yeah, we've also had the conversation of like the reason some of those top end keyboards are worth the money to some like the, the people that pay that kind of money for a keyboard is typically because most people have started off on the lower end and work their way up. Like they kind of build up on like what is qual like they have a sense for like what is low quality because they've used something that is lower quality. They've used something that's a little nicer quality. And then all of a sudden they've, they've used this premium thing. So you like have to build up to understand what, I guess what is higher quality and what is lower quality in a sense. And, yeah. and to Gringo's point, right. Or to like the point you made, uh, we're not, being gatekeeping right like uh, in that regard if you want to go spend you know two and a half grand on a keyboard as your first keyboard knock yourself out I, it's not my money i'm spending i yeah. can't spend two and a half grand on a keyboard right now so <laughs> i won't but all, all we're saying is like i feel like we get these new people that come in or at least i see them where they come in they're like well i i need i need to get in on this this you know this group buy like i need a, a picking a you know keyboard here and it's like you you don't need that like you will be okay if the first keyboard you buy is something lower or in price or not necessarily the perfect thing and we're not trying to be gatekeeping saying that you don't have the experience to buy this it's a keyboard anyone can use a freaking keyboard yeah. but what we say is we don't want you coming in as a new person and thinking i have to buy uh you know a vega right now and i have to buy jwk switches and i have to buy gmk that is that's a 500 hundred dollar build right there if i can do my math and it's like yeah. you do not have to do that out the gate it, you can build up to that point yeah and, and i think i think another thing is because gringo just mentioned again like some people don't want to go down that journey they just want to they just want a nice keyboard and i think the the thing is for people who have never who haven't messed with a lot of these keyboards a nice keyboard is like you say like you want a nice keyboard i mean that could very well be a 150 dollar 200 dollar keyboard is an, a really nice keyboard so I, I don't know i just think uh and it's again it's not like a you shouldn't buy this and don't buy this i think it's more of like it might be you might be doing yourself a disservice i guess by just diving in like that hard i guess i don't know yeah and, and we're speaking from a place of like we i mean like me I've yeah been, from my like, personal experience yeah. of what i've used so far yeah but it's, I mean, it's you're talking conversation. yeah you're talking like a yeah. switch collection here right i've tried all these i've tried 831 switches now that i have and if i had settled on the first thing that i thought i can say from my own personal experience i would not have ended up using the switches that i do yeah. now hmm. so i can only recommend trial and error and i can only recommend <laughs> you know, buying a switch tester because that's where I got to the experience I am now. I'm not saying everyone who buys a, a switch tester is going to be scrolling AliExpress at 3 a.m. before <laughs> they get up for work to like, oh, I have to find this one weird cherry vintage sculpt. Like, like you don't, that's not what you're going to turn into, but having more understanding is what I will always recommend. Experience yeah. is what gets you to where you are. So. Yeah, and I mean, like we're gonna see plenty of people, even in like even in the fashion world. I think the fashion world's like the best example I can give you, um, where people will jump straight into like if they want to grab like the best shoes in in quotes, um, they'll go for like something like Yeezys, something that's like very commonly known as like something very cool. And like, you know, I felt I felt trapped to that too. Like there was a point where I wanted Yeezys. But at the end of the day, it's kind of just like I, I, I now that I have understanding of like hobbies and like how things work and stuff like there's other there's like especially especially when it comes to that. Like, yeah, you can go buy your Yeezys and never touch the hobby like no one's stopping you. Um, but if you want to get into keyboards, it's kind of like what we're saying. Then there is that there is like a very interesting journey. You can start at the top and work your way down. But like some of the most enjoyable keyboards I've used 
are boards that cost me like 200 bucks 300 bucks yeah mm -hmm. and then i'll i'll chill out for my my zlant or my plank i mean i i enjoy using those all the time i'm gonna have a, a Borsdorf build that is you know it's several hundred dollars more than even thinking about what you could do to a plank and i've got you know plenty of stuff coming that's going to be interesting or cool for me to build but I feel confident in my enjoyability of something like a Clarabelle because I've I've spent that time in doing that. I, I don't think that, you know, everyone has a little bit different way of doing stuff, but if you're coming into this hobby and you don't just want to buy and dip out, you know, I would always recommend that that trial. So yeah, uh, yeah it's it's different. It's it's definitely hard to like pin down one sentiment because like Gringo brought up a good point and yeah, we all have like different point. opinions on it and we're yeah. <laughs> We are growing as a, a community, whether you like it or not, things are changing. So there is going to be different opinions on how to go about doing this. But the the longer that you're in this hobby, I feel like you tend to support trial and error is the way to go. Yeah. But if, in, in to, to that point too, like I love questions like that. I love questions that like challenge thinking because that's what this is about too, Keepcast. That's what like hobbies and learning is about. So Thank you for asking that too, Gringo. That's like, or even okay. making that statement. Like that, those are good statements to have. Like it challenges everyone. It keeps people in check. So those are yeah. those are good things to have too, man. No, I hope no more sneakerheads join the hobby. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Honestly, sneakers are a different beast. I don't even want to talk about sneakers. Uh, I mean, if I could have skipped all the shitty TKL purchases I've made to put into the better stuff, I would have. Totally, I agree with that too, gnarly. There's some stuff that like I regret purchasing. For example, I I regret purchasing some expensive boards too um one of them being as you guys know i'm just not a fan of the matrix noah i've tried some of the other matrix stuff and they sound great but the matrix noah not for me uh yeah. so yeah i regret that purchase I, that's like the one purchase i actually the only purchase i probably regret in this entire hobby is the i noah. can i can take that regret off of you if you're if it's like really causing you some sleep <laughs> if you want a pink noah with two dead leds by all means we'll, we'll work something out um i don't really like the way i've modded it to hell and back though so it sounds like pretty good now but uh i would even go to say as the hobby made me more humble i think so too i think there's like a lot of this stuff in the hobby like one of the good things for me that i'll constantly bring up is like a the community um uh, b it kind of makes me res respect like the effort and work and like the process that goes into some higher end things but it also makes me really respect like for example what what rama is doing what novel keys is doing what uh even what the portico is doing with uh, you know tkc even what space is doing with acrylic boards um the the more budget friendly because i we also have to remember whether well, there's people who do and can spend um an extreme amount of money on keyboards so there, there's always going to be those people who want to get into the hobby and maybe the only thing they can afford is like a 200 hundred dollar board and they want to experience something custom and maybe that's the only thing they ever buy so i really really like that stuff too i really love the the entry level uh more attainable stuff as well I mean, we want to talk about community benefits, patience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God. I <laughs> I used to be like, I used to be that guy. I'd order something from Amazon. They're like two to four day shipping. I'm like, I swear to God, I'm calling customer service. If this isn't here in one and a half days, this is ridiculous. And now I've bought, I've bought switches that have sat with a, a friend of mine in the UK who holds stuff for me. Like this is, this is a great secret that I haven't really let out. I haven't tried mm. NK silks yet. Because oh. I got a set of them given to my buddy in the UK and he's like, I'll ship them to you. And we just haven't shipped them until like right now. So in all this time that they've been out, I still have never tried these switches, but I'm like, oh, I'll get to try them eventually. Or like waiting six months to a year for a group buy. Oh, it's I, I've I've learned patience like no other. <laughs> uh, it's incredible. So but I no, I, I actually want to say the opposite for me. And I want space and chase and I want chat to even say like well i have learned patience within our hobby now when i order something off amazon and it tells me like guaranteed one day delivery i'm like this shit better come in one day like like that's the opposite effect for me because now even when i see like three to seven business days approximately i'm like it better not Find teeter on the product, pre precipice like the same, of eight days same dude. product different vendor yeah 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 i've actually been in calls with alex while he's like uh hitting up <laughs> support for multiple companies and uh, <laughs> an angry alex is funny I yeah guess. it's it's not even it's like me being kind of like 
why put the guarantee thing if you're not going to guarantee it type thing? At least with the, with the keyboard stuff, it's like, hey, there might be delays and we can communicate to that to you. But like with some of the bigger companies who, you know, you pay this express service for, it actually makes me like a little bit more frustrated these days and be like, then why did you put guaranteed if you can't even guarantee like within like an approximation of that date? And I, I understand there's terrible. delays and stuff, but like, my goodness, sometimes it's like the opposite effect for me with certain products. Yeah. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah. Really <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's one of those things where it's like more brought out recently where I'm like, for example, I had a product that was supposed to ship out, um, God knows how long ago. And I just remembered about it and I went to go look it up online and, and it, it still hasn't been shipped out. And I'm like, oh, this says guaranteed because I bought I, like it was just like a, be a, a UPS shipment. And it's not UPS, it's like this in this case the vendors. So I had to email them and like, oh we just forgot. And I'm like, that's great. And I understand like there's that human aspect of everything, and I think people should understand there's a human aspect of everything, but it's definitely one of those things where it's kind of like, oh man, like I hope I never have that mistake. I definitely will eventually, but uh it's it's definitely it's definitely sometimes not fun. Shipping within hours, to... I'm used to one month shipping from China. It's a test of patience. Totally, I, I, <laughs> I agree. Like everything is a test of patience and patience is an amazing virtue to have. And there's there's days where we can be like less human about it and stuff, but it's uh, it's definitely a good virtue to have. And I do think this hobby does teach it to a very high level of regard. You know? And not, not, not nicely either. No, it is. It is against your will. You yeah. will learn. You have to learn patience when it comes to group buys yeah. to, like, to some level. So something that early on, I think that this this hobby kind of, I would say like a negative uh, aspect of this hobby on me from group buy stuff is that fear uh, or of like seeing something being like, ooh, I like that. And like, I have to grab it or else I'm going to pay, you know, FOMO? a hefty price for yeah. it later. But like, I think for a long time I felt that way and I did buy a lot of things out of straight up just like, I hate saying FOMO because it's like a weird thing to say, but, but yeah, like th that's basically what it was. And I think I finally have broken out of like th that. And like, as a, as a consumer, I think it's nice to finally be broken out of that, like stint of like, I have to buy everything that I think I like, even if like, it's going to show up and I'm, I may not really care for it that much, hmm. but like that, that is, a. Uh, I mean, obviously that's something a lot of industries feed off of is that uh they get you they get you with that oh it's only it's only limited available edition. for this limited time it's yeah. well you see that even with quantity. food man you see that even with like cereal like limited edition like double well, chocolate I mean, that's oreo how, you know that's how taco down bell oreo keeps cookies, their doors yeah. open well, they release that new thing edition, that's there yeah. for a limited time every other week and people hey, rush in the taco bell is a bitter point in this household <laughs> they remove every potato dish these these fiesta potatoes i i swear to god i'm going to gain like 50 pounds if they ever bring those fiesta potatoes <laughs> i have like my taco bell consumption has been cut to like a tenth when they removed fiesta potatoes and i am so freaking bitter about it <laughs> I, I don't think i've ever had taco bell in my entire life i love taco bell it's like a mile from me right now it is an experience I don't know. Yeah. It's it's not very like I, at least I don't know for the rest of the Canadians in the chat. I just feel like there's not a lot of them, at least here in Toronto. I just don't feel like there's a lot of Taco Bell in Toronto. I, I I'm sorry, guys. I just really haven't seen too many of them. I think I've maybe seen two, and I don't go out of my way for Taco Bell. You know, so you can water down Oreos anytime I hear it. You can yes. That's a Perry's life hack. Um, but guys, we have hit our two hours. We have, we have gone way over it. We just had a blast talking uh, with Mr. Thurman Goat. If you guys want to learn more about Thurman Goat, exclamation point guest or exclamation point Thurman Goat. Um, Chase, Reagan, did you guys have any last? That's uh, that's ThurmanGoat.com and your Twitter. Your Twitter and Instagram are two different handles, right? I think your Instagram is... It's at Goat Thurman for twitter and for instagram is at theremin go mk um why is it like that i don't know 
<laughs> it is. It's okay, right? I think I've made accounts and then forgotten they existed, and now I needed to have those. So it's at Goat Theremin for Twitter or at Theremin Goat MK. All these things are at the top right hand side of my website or under the contact tab, including links to the Switch Collector Discord as well as the scorecards on my GitHub that I've talked about. So feel free to follow, Th find me anywhere. ThermanGoat.com for everything that you may need to follow the man himself. Yeah. Yes. But thank you guys again for tuning in. Thank you guys for the subs while we were streaming. Appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you for everyone listening as well. Um, and thank you for being here, taking your time to talk to us. Thanks for having Let's, me along, guys. This was a blast. Thank you. You guys want to, uh, again, check them out? We have given you some links. Take a look. And for everyone watching, it's what Chase just said. Um, let's see who we can raid. Do we want to do keyboards or do you want to do video games today? I don't know. I think, you know We've what? Let's raid. Ramen Champ on. Let's, do we want to do uh, more keyboard content? Let's see. We got Katana. Let's see who's in Makers and Crafting. Do we have anyone new who we can promote? Let's see. Should raid Ramen. Uh, I have so many people on my friends list. It's like impossible to see who's online. Can you just get? Can you guys give me a link, please? There's... God, dude, this. I need to clean up my friends list. <laughs> Ram, it's ramen champ builds. Okay, raid. Okay, bam. All right, guys, you guys have a great night. Thank you again for stopping by the stream, and uh, we will be streaming again Tuesday. Wednesday we're doing the Kara. Tuesday we're doing. Knee 87 and then Thursday we're doing more group by slash interest check reviews and then Saturday we're doing a holiday stream so if you guys want to Ooh. check it out but you guys have a good night enjoy ramen champ builds and take care everybody love you guys thanks, thanks for coming around guys <laughs>